So here is our Snell's Law problem. So what we have is a block of crown glass. Now crown glass has a particular refractive index of 1.6. So I'm going to draw my crown glass like so, and I'm going to label that is equal to 1.6. It's a value, it doesn't have a unit. Then I have a red laser, and I only have a pink pen. So we're going to fire off this at an angle like so, and we know that that refracts and of course, it always refracts towards a normal as it enters a denser medium, like so. We're asked, in this case, the angle of refraction. We also, of course, have to label our data. So we have 632 is our wavelength. Our angle of incidence is always measured from the normal. So we know that this is equal to 30 degrees. And we know this is the angle we're looking for, and I'm going to call it R. Lastly, of course, you set out the formula. Now, this formula is often set out in different ways. The way I always teach my students is to simply say N2 over N1 is equal to sine I over sine R. And why I do that is because you start with N2 is the value you're going into, right? And N1, of course, is the one, therefore, you're coming from. So if we substitute everything in, we get 1.6 over 1. Now, if it's a vacuum, it is 1. If it's air, it's like a really close value to 1, 1.006 1 or something to that effect. In this case, we have sine i, which we're told is sine 30. And of course, sine r is what we're interested in. So now all I need to do is rearrange that. And so I get sine r is equal to sine 30 divided by 1.6, I'm going to get our value of 18.2 degrees. Now, we're then also asked to work out, well, what's the wavelength of the red light in the glass? Well, the ratio of our N2 over N1 is also equal to the ratio of the velocity of the light outside. That is, in this case, 1 over the velocity of the light inside, which is 2, and that is also equal to the wavelength outside over the wavelength where you're going to. In other words, the wavelength, if you look at the values here, the wavelength gets smaller, the velocity decreases. And so, as a result, we know that 1.6 is going to be equal to 632 nanometers over our unknown value. And so you can see our unknown value becomes 395 Newton meters. So there is the wavelength inside the crown glass. Now, just at one point, most of you are saying, hold on, how can the velocity decrease inside the glass? That's actually a, a property due to the electromagnetic nature of waves. You'll, I have a video that discusses why the angles bend and why the light actually slows down. Because just an important point, the definition of the speed of light of being 3 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second is in a vacuum. The actual value is actually less when it enters a denser medium. In any case, hope that this helped you. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye.